Shockwave is cold and incredibly cruel, but it isn't the same kind of cruelty you see in the character Arachnid, who takes great pleasure in seeing others in pain. Shockwave's cruelty is his lack of caring because he will do anything in the name of science and will not let ethics get in the way of making a discovery or getting a result. He has done terrible things in the Aligned continuity, including enslaving bots to build a tower, which many died in the process of building. He experimented on and tortured Autobot prisoners of war to test the limits of a Cybertronian. He modified bots against their will to see what monsters he could create, and that is how the Lightning Strike Coalition, just some Autobots, became the Dinobots with a thirst for revenge. If you ask Shockwave himself, he would probably say that he has no emotions. After all, emotions get in the way of logical thinking. But it's not actually true that he has no emotions. Some we can point out for sure. Another thing I want to talk about is that Shockwave might actually be becoming nicer than he used to be. If you look at how he is acting at the end of Transformers Prime, he does not seem to be nearly as bad as he was before. Let's talk about all Shockwave's life. He is an old bot who was alive during the Quintesson invasion of Cybertron. Before the great cities of Cybertron were created, when things were still developing, he isolated himself from others and lived at the edge of society. He made a lot of discoveries and was incredibly useful, but he was not interacting with other Cybertronians. You can imagine that this had a large impact on him. After all, Cybertronians are not born evil or insane. Since they have a creator, they can be made to be stable, good, and caring. But if Shockwave spent centuries and millennia hardly interacting with his own kind, he will hardly feel anything for them. They will seem like an irritating other that he doesn't truly understand. I mean, it could be possible that Shockwave started off as an eager young scientist and just slowly became way too obsessed with his passion. He let nothing keep him from the truths of the universe, no distractions like friendships, no other hobbies, no feelings of attachment that would keep him from learning something new, even if that meant destroying his failed experiments. So what emotions have we seen in Shockwave? Anger is definitely an emotion, although sometimes it is forgotten. What I mean is sometimes soulless or emotionless characters are labeled, but they still get enraged at the main character in these stories. Let's analyze the anger Shockwave holds towards Starscream. Shockwave gets very upset when someone tries to kill him, and when Shockwave returns, he does go right to Starscream and demands to know why he has been left to fend for himself. When Starscream doesn't tell Shockwave that the Autobots were coming, he realizes that Starscream was hoping he would get killed. Shockwave grabs him, shoves him, and tries to impale his face for it. The point here is that if Shockwave were emotionless, he would not react this way. He would think along the lines of, okay, Starscream tried to end my life, if I die, I cannot do more research, therefore Starscream will have to be eliminated. He would not raise his voice, yell out, or be so rough. He would just kill him and say no more than a monotone explanation that it had to be done. Shockwave, of course, gets annoyed by Starscream's rivalry for Megatron's attention. Shockwave participates in the contest to make the other look bad. This goes on in Season 3, whenever one of them fails, the other will exaggerate it in front of Megatron. Shockwave doesn't raise his voice the way Starscream does, but you can see his annoyance in the way he goes silent and flicks his head spikes. If Shockwave had no emotions, he would not feel annoyance and would simply ignore Starscream's game. But Shockwave says things that aren't necessary just to insult Starscream because he can't resist it. Only Starscream could fail to dispose of a helpless captive. Fear. As we saw with anger, Shockwave actually cares about staying alive. Fear is the most physically clear emotion you can see on Shockwave. His eye becomes tight and small, and his head spikes flare in the same way as Starscream's wings. The mere realization that the Lord of the Undead is standing in front of Shockwave absolutely terrifies him to the core. He does not shrug and give no damn about if he's killed or not. When the zombie Predacons start crawling toward him, he is so scared that he can't even use his big ol' brain. He doesn't even drive away and just instinctively tries to shoot back. Ambition. Shockwave used to be much more power hungry but has slowly become disinterested. Before Transformers Prime, Shockwave was secretly plotting to take over the Decepticons. He was glad to be left behind on Cybertron when the Decepticons went to space, because he was in charge of the planet. He built the biggest tower ever to be built on Cybertron just to flex. He intended to build up his power so that he could defeat Megatron when he returned. He captured Alpha Trion to torture him because he hoped unlocking Vector Sigma could give him more power. In fact, Shockwave is responsible for the mass death of the Seekers and Voss. He had the city destroyed by a laser just to weaken Starscream's base of power, so that he could become Megatron's first second-in-command. Shockwave has wanted to push down Starscream for a while, and so when Megatron's original second-in-command was reunited with him, this is why he makes the decision to divide their power. But since Shockwave's tower fell and he was defeated, Shockwave doesn't seem to be motivated anymore to overthrow Megatron. And now the most important discussion point. Shockwave's caring? 
Is it possible that more and more emotions are being stirred up inside him the longer he interacts with others? In Transformers Prime, we start to see some goodwill coming out of him that would not come out of a completely sparkless bot. He's still quite cruel, that is true. He expresses pride over his creations and treats them respectfully, but he was still willing to kill them. It's not that he experienced pleasure in their deaths like Starscream did. When Shockwave interacts with Ratchet, he has a politer and more energetic attitude. He got along incredibly well with the Autobot. Shockwave, however, did not mind that Ratchet was to be killed after their research project. But hey, Shockwave was actually friendly to someone and seemed happier working with another bot than working by himself. Now there are two more surprisingly nice things I will point out that Shockwave did. The first is that Shockwave saved Starscream. He's actually upset and he wants to do something on Megatron's behalf. For those who say that Starscream was faking it, tell me what would Starscream have done if no one held him back? How could he have predicted that someone who hates him would have grabbed him as he rushed forward? For some reason, Shockwave doesn't just let Starscream, the troublemaker, toss himself at the enemy. He actually restrains Starscream as he struggles and briefly carries Starscream toward the exit. Before they start running together, Shockwave was the one who snapped Sense into Starscream and took him with him. When they see one escape pod left, Shockwave could have taken it for himself by shoving Starscream out of it. Instead, he allows Starscream to come with him. Why? Throughout the whole show, Shockwave has indicated that he thinks Starscream is useless and a bother. Starscream has been a threat to him. Despite all that, Shockwave does not want to be by himself. He takes whatever other Decepticon he could with him as support. And it is weird because Shockwave immediately clones some Predacons, and the Predacons are way more useful and less annoying than Starscream. If Shockwave wanted protection, his obedient Predacons are way better than Starscream. So with Skylinks and Darksteel's creations, Starscream is already obsolete. But he doesn't give Starscream, his rival to the Decepticon leadership, the boot. He doesn't off him, he still keeps him around and the two act more casual than they ever did before Megatron's death. When Starscream is frightened, he even hops to Shockwave's side for some sort of comfort. He doesn't hide behind him to use him as a meat shield. It seems that being in the same situation as Decepticons has formed a bond between them. And then Shockwave is the one who directs the Predacons to fight against Unicron. This is Shockwave's character development because during the war, he helped poison Primus with Dark Energon. This time, when Unicron fully intends to kill Primus, Shockwave wants to stop him. But why would he care about his creator? Shockwave could fly away in a spaceship and sustain himself technically because he knows the complete formula for synthetic energon. Could it be that Shockwave wanted Cybertron to stay alive, even for it to be able to produce life again? You could argue that he had selfish reasons, but I'm inclined to say otherwise because sometimes when he speaks you can hear the hints of emotion. He has a certain cold, I don't care if you die way of speaking, but then he has a lighter tone and that is the one he used at the end. So what do you think? Is Shockwave slowly opening up the more time he spends around others? Is he unchangeable? Anyway, we'll do the same thing sometime to explore the emotions of Optimus. Has becoming a prime made him lose his feelings? Or is he just concealing them to protect his Autobots? I am tempted to force you to share my perception of things. No. Remarkable. Yes, quite an act of providence.